Okay, we've depicted what's supposed to be a sine curve. It's a little skewed this way in the top arch, but we'll have to deal with that or just live with it. Uh, but anyhow, we've sketched the sine function on a horizontal axis. Okay, so uh, we've labeled the vertical axis according to the values between which we want the sine function to fluctuate. So we've got a sine function. with values from 15 to 25 on one complete cycle. How are we going to deal with that? The problem is, of course, that um, if this is your horizontal axis, it should correspond to y equals 0. But halfway between 15 and 25 is 20. So this line here is at y equals 20. So that line can't possibly be your horizontal axis. OK, well, I'm going to modify this slightly. First of all, I'm going to make this into a dotted line. I don't know if this is going to smear or not. And then I'm going to put the uh, axis where it really ought to be. OK, well, this distance is 10. And here is y equals 20. So if I go 10 below that and then 10 below that, I find the location of my actual horizontal axis. And I'll put an arrow in that. So I've taken this original horizontal axis, and I could have easily drawn a circle here, radius 5, constructed this graph. Um, but I would not have been able to label this as my horizontal axis because it doesn't go through y equals 0. Okay, y equals 0 is down here. So how would we represent this function? Well, let me draw a parallel graph to this with 5 here and negative 5 here. And forgive me if the drawing isn't a particularly good one. You still understand what it means. Try to keep from skewing that arch. Okay. Okay, so this graph is the same as this graph, except this one's up where we want it, and this one is down here where the horizontal axis goes through the middle. Now, how does this graph relate to this graph? First of all, this graph, well, let's put a scale on it. Let's just say that uh, this is a fluctuation of temperature in Celsius during a day uh, in uh, maybe early summer, late spring, or in the fall sometime. So that your scale here would be 24 hours. And let me actually draw the scale down here on the axis. Okay. Now, this means, of course, that your uh, variable here, which would be a time variable, has to change phase by 2 pi when t changes by 24 hours so that the phase should equal pi over 12 radians, in this case per hour, times t. So that we have some multiple of the sine of pi over 12 radians per hour times t. And of course, the amplitude is 5. And let's say y is in Celsius. So we'll just indicate Celsius by capital C. I'm going to use the word amplitude. I've used it before. I haven't written it out yet. Just the distance between the, the center and the high point, or the center and the low point. Those two distances are equal. 
um, and either of those distances is the amplitude. So the amplitude is what? Well, from 0 to 5 is 5, so it's 5 Celsius. So this function is y equals 5 Celsius times the sine of pi over 12 radians per hour times t. That's this function. So what's this function? Take a given value of t, a vertical line corresponding to that value of t. How does the y value up here correspond to the y value down here? Okay, what do you think? Well, this axis for the sine function we have up here, it's not our t-axis, but it is an axis, is 20 units above this axis. So that this point had better be 20 units above this point. So that, well, write, out, write it out yourself. What do you think it ought to be? Why do you think it ought to be that? Pause, write it out, and see what you got. Uh, I'm going to say it's, now, I'm going to write it out. It's 20 Celsius plus 5 Celsius times the sine of pi over 12 radians per hour. Got to be careful I don't write radians per second because that's what I usually end up having to write in my physics classes. Uh, okay. Here we have a model for our temperature. Okay, and we don't have to call it necessarily have to call it Y, we call it capital T for temperature if we want to be sure we understand what it means. Okay? Um, so that's an example of how we could easily <coughs> get the graph of a sine function or sine curve above or below the axis. Very easy to do. So that I can say this. Okay, general. Okay, I'm going to say y equals I'm going to use some symbols that I haven't used y equals a sine of omega t plus k I'm going to say that that function vertically stretches the sine function by factor A. And let me just explain that briefly. If I did just a regular sine function, and let me do that in a different color. Okay, y equals sine of pi over 12 radians per hour times t would have this graph. Why? Because the amplitude of the sine function that I've drawn here is 5 Celsius. If I reduce that by a factor of 5, then I have the graph of y equals sine of pi over 12 radians per hour times t. And I better put Celsius out here. Otherwise, we have different units, okay? So if this y is measured in Celsius, this would be the graph, okay? So that here's your basic sine function with the period dictated by the 24-hour daily period of a temperature fluctuation. 
if we multiply this graph by 5, well, I may, probably made it a little too high. It looks like about one fourth. But you understand that multiplying this by 5 then stretches the graph by 5 units. Now, notice again uh, also that I actually constructed this graph as opposed to this one rather than just doing a multiple labeling of the axes. Okay, so if I start with this function, then I stretch that by factor 5 to get the high point 5 points 5 times further from the axis and the low point 5 times further from the axis. Then add that function to 20 Celsius, I get this graph. Okay, now over here, A is like your 5 Celsius. This omega thing that I'm not going to talk about too extensively, it's just your pi over 12 radians per second in this example. And here's the 20 Celsius that you have to raise all these temperatures by. Okay, so Y is A sine of omega T plus K. These are the symbols that we most often use in modeling sine functions. Um, this has a period of 2 pi over omega. Okay, that is, if T changes by 2 pi over omega, then this quantity changes by 2 pi, giving us a complete cycle of the sine function. The amplitude is A. And that's also a vertical stretch. And vertical shift K. So again, it's as though we started out with just a plain old Y equals A sine of theta function. We say then that uh, theta is going to change by 2 pi when t changes by 24 hours, giving us this omega, which is pi over 12 radians per second. And that's, uh, and then of course the period then is 2 pi divided by pi over 12. 2 pi divided by pi over 12 is 24. Um, and it's not radians per second, it's radians per hour. And then we raise the graph up 20 Celsius to get our mean daily temperature, essentially. Okay, well, that's an example of a vertical shift of a sine graph.